this week's episode of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress, Bebop finally gets his bloody revenge against his warmongering father, and unleashes Mumei and her brand new Kabane monster powers against the Shogunate. This was a pretty kick-ass episode right here, which was a fantastic build-up to the finale of the series, which, by the end of it, had me leaning at the edge of my seat, and I was so excited to see the direction that it's going in. Because not only is Mume being transformed into one of those giant smoke Kabane collective creatures, but Ikoma is also going through some pretty big changes as well. If you remember from the last episode, he was stabbed by Mume, tossed off the train, and left for dead. And of course, since he's the main character of the series, he's going to be just fine, despite the fact that his arm was freaking blown off by a freaking steam-powered gun. However, that's not going to get him down at all, as he's confronted by Kurusu and one of the scientists who are working directly under Biba. And so he decides that preparing for the final battle, he's going to have to gear up like Ash from Evil Dead 2. Was I the only one who was thinking this the entire time when he decided to take his steam-powered railgun and attack it to his freaking arm which had already been cut in half. The only way this scene could have been even cooler is if as soon as he was done doing this and testing out the weapon for the very first time that they'd have done a close-up on his face and he would have said, Groovy. And yet, that's still not the end of the badassery for Ikoma, as he decides to inject himself with this experimental Kabane juice, which basically transforms him into this indestructible creature, which I imagine is going to make the final episode of the series even crazier, because now it looks like we're going to have a big monster mash, and I can't wait to see how that's going to turn out. The form he takes is really creepy. Basically, the Kabane curse starts to go over his entire body, his skin turns this like super dark purple, and his eyes get really glowy. He also gives himself a brand new haircut, which makes him look all sorts of badass, and he's finally decided to ditch those doofy glasses. Frankly, this is the coolest version of Ikoma that I've seen from the series, and I can't wait to see him get his bloody revenge in the next episode. And then, of course, there's Biba, where everything is just working out for this guy. We get to learn a little bit more about his past and how his father was extremely paranoid about his son and tried to kill him multiple times, driven by fear. And that's what Bebop's doing here. He's driven by fear and using that to take out his father in a really clever way where he confronts him, making it seem as if he's actually been captured by Ayame and their group. No, this is actually all a big part of his plan as he hands his father this knife, which has been laced with that weird Kabane curse, which starts to infect him, and he makes it seem as if everybody within the Shogun group has actually been infiltrated by different Kabane, and they all start to turn on each other, just killing each other, beating the shit out of each other, shooting each other in the face, and this gives Bebop the perfect opportunity to execute his father with one massive swing from his sword, basically taking the throne for himself. While all of this is going on, Mume has been injected with that weird blue Kabane stuff which has transformed her into one of those collective hearts. And then she starts to bring all of these Kabane bodies into her, and she takes the form of what appears to be like a giant horse or a wolf. I'm not sure what the hell it is, but it's some sort of quadrupedal creature, and I loved the imagery when she was transforming for the very first time, because this comes right after Bebop's group comes in and just throws all of these droves of Kabane into the people, and they all start getting eaten alive, and then suddenly Mume's just sort of walking through the streets, and she's reminded of this scene with her mother, with this butterfly, and as she's transforming, you get to see that there's this, like, this weird blue fire which is erupting from her shoulder blades and it almost takes the form of butterfly wings but while that's going on she's also starting to absorb all of these Kabane creatures as she prepares to go on a Godzilla-esque rampage. This episode right here was a great build-up to the finale and I can't wait to see how they're going to wrap everything up so what's the rundown on this week's episode of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress? Man, that freaking Ecoma scene where he decided to attach his gun to his arm was so damn cool! I loved that so much! I especially love how he just tested it out right there. He's feeling no pain, he's ready to go into battle, and he's prepared to sacrifice himself to save his friends and the rest of the world. The thing I'm most interested in seeing from the final episode of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress is simply just how they're going to wrap everything up. Because as much as I'm thinking this is going to be the final episode of the series, there's still a lot of things that they need to explain, like 
Where did the Cabane come from? How were they created? Why are they even around? Has this always been sort of this post-apocalyptic steampunk world? Was there a point when this was actually just modern times and everything just sort of regressed to this period? I mean, we do have steam-powered motorcycles, after all. Then again, there's a lot of influence which is taken from Japanese culture. Is it just Japan which is taken over by the Cabane, or is it simply everything in the world? There's so many questions which need to be answered, and still even if they don't answer them, I still think it's going to be a pretty satisfying finale, if only to see what's going to happen with Ikoma and Mumei, who are now going through some extreme drastic forms, which, you know, I was sort of always half expecting that Ikoma was going to transform into something. I just didn't expect it, like, to be within this season or anything, and the fact that he's doing it in this way is frankly kind of disturbing, especially with that one random scientist who suddenly they just decide to turn into something of a main character. You know, he's always been sort of in the background, but now that Kurusu has him by a leash, they're able to utilize him in a lot more interesting ways because he knows all of the secrets about the Kabane, the Kabaneri, and actually what their compositions are all like, which allows Ikoma to go through this crazy transformation which makes him look absolutely horrifying. It's awesome. And then there's Mume's form, which just... What the hell am I even looking at? Like, they only give you, like, one shot of it at the very end of the episode, and it looks like some sort of wolf, horse, quadrupedal thing with all of these giant blue fiery wings coming out from behind its back. Very different from the other colonized Kabane creatures that we've seen in the series. So I really can't wait to see this thing go on a rampage, and I can't wait to see how Bebop is actually going to control all of this. Like, this just seems like an excuse to destroy absolutely everything. And even though he is taking the throne, it looks like he wants to burn the entire Kongo Kaku area all the way to the ground. Biba is such a ridiculous villain, and his father honestly is no better. His father is super freaking hardcore. He actually kills one of the guards randomly in this episode just because he knows information that he doesn't want to get leaked out. It's very obvious that Biba comes from a very broken home, and it's got even worse when he's decided to come back home and wreck shit up. So this was an awesome episode right here. I really, really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with the finale of the series. This episode did it with a lot of gusto. There were a lot of scenes which made great use of the artwork in the atmosphere. I think that's probably the strongest element of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress is when they do those really awesome, super detailed close-up shots of people, which always manage to display a lot of emotion and get the viewer really pumped up for what's going to be coming next. I cannot wait to see if this series is going to end in heartbreak and tragedy, or if there's going to be a much brighter future for Ikoma, Mumei, and all of their friends in this post-apocalyptic steampunk world. So, great episode right here. Cannot wait for the final episode of the series. I'm dropping a 5 out of 5 on this bad boy. Cabinary of the Iron Fortress has continued to surprise me this season, and is definitely going to be one of the big hits of 2016. Check it out, action anime fans. You're definitely going to see something you'll like. But if any of you did watch this week's episode, make sure to tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. Did you have a favorite scene from this week's episode? Do you think that Inkoma and Mume are going to end up throwing down? What's the deal with Inkoma's brand new form? What do you think he's going to be truly capable of? And what do you want to see from the finale of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress? Please tell me in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be able to see all of our latest anime and manga reviews. Make sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and make sure to leave me a comment. Make sure to also check out all the cool links we got floating around in the description box below. One of them might actually be our weekly podcast series, The Powerful Nerdcast. It's pretty freaking awesome. Thank you guys again for watching. And as always... Stay dandy, baby!